Haley, what is our first main topic today? John, our first main topic comes to us from John Hasplan. He says, good morning, John and crew. It looks like the end of an era is right at our doorstep. The Arrowverse has slowly been dying the last couple of years, but I just read that the new leadership at CW is saying that WB programming, which is basically the Arrowverse, is going to be greatly reduced to what they're calling minimal. Does this mark the final end of what was the Arrowverse? If so, how will it be remembered? John, do you think the Arrowverse is slowly dying? Well, I mean, let's be honest. The Arrowverse has been slowly dying for a while yeah. now. I mean, I mean, it just, we know that. I mean, it, ever since Arrow uh, ran out its course and, and finished its run and Stephen Amell left, the Arrowverse didn't have Arrow anymore. Still had Flash, uh, but Flash ran out of steam. And, and, and that's still a show that I will always remember fondly. I, I liked Flash very, very much. It did run out of steam. I kind of tapped out of the show a little while ago. But I will still always look back on that show very, very fondly. I thought it was a really good win. And I thought that show was a stupid idea. <laughs> but I ended up liking it very much. But yeah, so as most of you may know, there was basically a takeover of CW. Warner Brothers Discovery and their partners are still owners of CW. But they are now the minority owners. And the majority owners are now saying... Yeah, Warner Brothers content, uh, it's going to be minimal. This comes to us from the folks uh, over at CBR who wrote the following. Do we got the side for that, Taylor? All right, here it is. And CBR wrote the following. Next Star's executive vice president and CFO, Lee Ann uh, Glia, stated during a Q3 earnings call on Tuesday that the carryover programming from the CW's former majority owners, Paramount Global and Warner Brothers Discovery, will be limited going forward. Programming for the CW is in place for the 2022 through 2023 broadcast season that extends through the end of August slash early September timeframe of next year. You'll see that programming is consistent with what the programmers have historically had on the air for that timeframe, uh, Glia said. Over the course of the next year, we're really working to develop our slate which will then come online in the 2023 and 2024 broadcast season. We will have some carryover commitment for the CBS and the Warner Brothers Discovery programming that year, but it's minimal at this point. So yeah, listen, when you're talking about CW programming and WB, you are basically talking about Arrowverse. There's other things, obviously, but Arrowverse. And the answer is, yeah, it, it is coming to the end of its life run. I think the Superman and Lois show is going to be the last remnant. Stargirl was just uh, canceled, obviously. Gone are shows like uh, Black Lightning, Arrow, Flash is coming to its end, all that kind of stuff. So yeah, it's coming to the end. So that leaves me wondering, what will the legacy of the Arrowverse be? You know, it had some really good ones. It had some not so good ones. But, you know, overall for me, I will always look back at the Arrowverse very, very fondly. Um, again, the, the very first show, Stephen Amell's Arrow, I thought that was a dumb idea and I got hooked on it instantly. I loved the approach to it. It was definitively CW, but it had something else to it. And it was very different from the type of comic book material we were getting in the movie. So it's not like I felt like we were missing out, out on anything. It was giving us, it was serving a demographic that wasn't being served by the larger movies. And then Flash came out. It was great. I loved, uh, Black Lightning. I thought Legends of Tomorrow was a little bit hit and miss. I didn't like Supergirl. So again, some things worked, some things didn't. But overall, I thought it served a really valuable role in the whole role of comic book material on the screen as a whole for a while. And while it is time, it's time for the CW DC Universe to end, I think it was a really pivotal moment for that mm -hmm. stuff. And I will look back on it finally. Anyway, Chris, do you think this does indeed mark the end of Arrowverse and stuff like that? And if so, how will it be remembered, do you I think? I do think it is the end. I mean, I, I love the phrasing of is that we're going to be limiting the DC shows on the CW. You could shorten that sentence so much. We're limiting the shows on the CW. Yeah, right. There is almost nothing left. We currently have Superman and Lois, All-American, the All-American spinoff, and I don't know what else there is. Penn and Teller try to fool us or whatever that show is. <laughs> I mean, I, what what is left you here? <laughs> so I think right now we are really going to be looking to be what the CW is going to be from now on, right? And I'm old enough to remember when it was WB and before that UPN. And it's gone through a lot of changes over the years. And I think this is one of those other moments of it has to go through a metamorphosis. It has to burn down so it can rise like the mighty phoenix and become something great once more.
Um, the Arrowverse was great. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a really, really great boon for, you know, um, comic book television. I think it got a lot of people who weren't into comic book culture into it. And it's always great when you can have a show inspire people, go to their local comic shop and actually pick something up and start reading it. And I think it did that. All these shows did kind of peter out, but that's the nature of television a lot of yes, times too, absolutely. especially American television. Yeah. We tend to do something till it's just like a beaten horse in the ground, right? The other day I was like, oh my God, America, uh, Grey's uh, Anatomy is still on? Oh That's still a thing? Yeah, and we forget that like, because like something like Grey's Anatomy or more specific, something like this CW, mm -hmm. like something like Supernatural goes 15 yeah. seasons. We mislead ourselves into thinking, well, that's the norm. No, that's no. the rare it's exception, the exception that something goes that long. Exactly. Usually something after three seasons, it starts to fizzle. Guys, we want to take a second to thank a sponsor of this episode, Amazon Pharmacy. Now, if you're anything like me, you dread going to the pharmacy. You never know what the hours are. You never know what you're going to pay. You're worried about being stuck in a huge line. And that's why you're going to love Amazon Pharmacy. Amazon Pharmacy delivers a better pharmacy experience that delivers directly to your door and works with most insurance plans. Amazon Pharmacy helps you save time, save money, and stay healthy. There's transparent pricing so you'll know exactly what you'll pay before you pay it. Prime members can also save up to 80% on their prescriptions. And like I mentioned earlier, Amazon Pharmacy works with most insurance plans. And this is one of the best parts. If you ever have any questions or problems, real pharmacists are always available at Amazon Pharmacy no matter what time of day or night. Your medication gets delivered to your door so there's no more rushing out to the store hoping to get there before they close. Amazon Pharmacy is a pharmacy that works for your life with meds delivered to your door. It doesn't get any better than that. Switch to Amazon Pharmacy and save time, save money, and stay healthy. Learn more at amazon.com slash campia. That's amazon.com slash campia. Average savings based on usage and inside RX data as compared to cash prices. Average savings for all generics are 78%, 37% for select brand medications. Restrictions apply. Rob, the same question to Chris, but also this as well. How do you feel this morning if you are like the producers of Gotham Knights or the <laughs> Winchesters, which just started, and you're reading that the new head of the network is saying, yeah, after a few months, going to be minimal, their stuff that we carry. I, I, I don't know. Is that kind of a... Uh, hey, long of doom coming for it, Yes, yes, it is, and it's it's kind of a bummer. I think they all knew this kind of going in, though. I mean, it can't be a surprise to anybody. I, you know, you asked about the legacy of the CW, especially the Arrowverse. I think it made good use of the DC universe. You know, they delved into a lot of characters. The crossover events were fun. You got to see Kevin Conroy, the voice of Batman in the animated series, play. Be you Batman. know, an older be Batman. I mean, it's too bad that they didn't give the entire Arrow, Arrowverse to Dick Wolf and he could move everything to Chicago and he could have just called it Chicago, D.C. Oh, my gosh. I mean, if it was Gotham Knights, dun dun, I would be there. Chicago Med, you know, Chicago PD. It should just be Chicago, D.C. And Dick Wolf can just take over the whole thing and they move every Greg Berlanti, give Dick Wolf a call, make a deal, move the entire D.C. universe into Chicago. Done. Seems to be working for them there. But I mean, I think I, I do think that everyone will look fondly, like you said, back at the Arrowverse because it was fun. It was fun. It wasn't. It wasn't morose. It wasn't dark. It was. I mean, they had villains, but everybody was having a good time. The colors were bright. Yeah, primary yeah. You know, colors. And, yeah. <laughs> and it was. It was a lot of fun. And you know, they did a lot of. There was a lot of really great representation across the DC universe. And I mean, representation in terms of different characters. Who would have thought we would have got 70s Black Lightning, that costume? I know you're not a big fan of it's it. It's the dumbest costume no, in the Come on, man. Did the Black stuff. Lightning yeah. rules. I grew up with it. Great. I loved it. It I was good. It, you know, and they, they did a lot of really cool stuff. They brought John Constantine back. They brought Brandon Ralph back. Brandon Ralph got to play Superman again. Yeah. The Kingdom yeah, Come That was Superman. pretty special. Yeah, so there was there was some great stuff, and, and you got to hand it to them. And and um, I think it was, a, it was a great run. I still remember... You know, we saw the billboards going up around Hollywood because I was still living down there at the time for for Arrow is coming, right? With this unknown actor, Stephen Amell on there. And then like one of the first promos came out and what do they call that exercise is the fish ladder? What do they call it when you've got the pull-up bar but you, it's literally just hanging on something and you pull yourself up and have to re remove the bar and put it to the next rung up Whoa. and put it. Guys in the live chat, what salmon I, ladder? That's John, what everybody in the yeah. live chat I find it hilarious that when you said exercise, you're looking at me like I know what that is. <laughs>
<laughs> like, yeah, well, or I'm not box to it. But the, no, I, the thing they made him to, do so Felicity Smoke could go, oh. Yeah, well, uh, if, but first of all, shout out to Nubian, Andy, all the guys in live chat mentioned it's called a Salmon Ladder. So one of the very first, th one of the first promos that came out, and there's Stephen Amell, shirtless, doing the Salmon Ladder. And we were just watching TV and that commercial came on and Ann's like, we're going to watch that show. <laughs> and I'm like, all I'm right, <laughs> sure, we're going to watch that show. I don't know, Kaylee, do, do you... Did you ever have like any CW show that was like a go-to yeah. show for you, whether it was the DC Arrowverse one or the, what was it? Gossip Girl Gosh. was, oh, was yeah. on Gossip Girl was on there back in the day. Yeah. yeah back in the day. Yeah, I which, do remember what, when it used to be like the WB, you remember yeah. it would be like, they'd have those cool little, um, the, all the actors from all the different shows, they'd be in a studio and they're like, yeah, so yeah. watch our show. Like it was like, it was like, <laughs> you remember that? They it was like them, it was like One Tree well, Hill, well, seven, the like John seven heaven days, uh, Gilmore Girls. Um, yes. Oh. Yeah. Can yeah. we do those promos for the John Campion show? Oh my God, they'll yeah. be hilarious. Yeah. yeah. Why hold on, hold on, hold on. That would be, <laughs> by the way, that'd be hilarious. We could monetize that on YouTube right away and get 25,000. There you hits. go. I'm in. John, you mentioned Stephen Amell shirtless doing a salmon ladder. Salmon ladders. Here yes. you go. Yeah, there it, there is. it is. So it, it's a, first of all, the exercise itself is crazy because you see that the bar isn't actually attached. So he, you have to pull yourself up and then use your momentum to then pull the bar down and move the bar up to the next rung and oh, on and on. American Ninja started using it after. Mm -hmm. After they were doing out an arrow, it was I could look impressive. like that. It's so crazy I do how look like I do that. not want to do that when I look at that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I have no desire. Yeah. I see that, and I'm like, I should go to In and Out. I was like, Where's Chipotle? <laughs> yeah. Where's Chipotle? That's why I love you. Yeah. Yeah. Let, okay. let me ask you this, True. Rob. As you double, look, double. as you look back, Animal style. at mm -hmm. uh, at the CW Arrowverse stuff. Yeah. What would you say was your favorite of the uh, of the Arrowverse kind of era? Probably early Flash. I really mm -hmm. liked early Flash because I've always liked the Flash rogues gallery and I've liked that character, but it just seemed like like by the end of it, it's it's how many Flashes are there? How many people are part of the Speed Force? Mm. You know, how many times have we brought back these villains? Uh, uh, but I did like Flash only because, I first of all, John Wesley Shipp, you know, they brought back the Flash. He was Flash in 1990, you know, bringing him back and seeing things like Jay Garrick and stuff. I I. I loved all that stuff. And then later on, a, a friend of mine who I admire greatly, Eric Wallace, became the showrunner of The Flash. Wow. And, and don't forget uh, Smallville. That was the only show I watched on CBS. Well, and then the, Tom Welling came yeah. back, even though, albeit briefly, in the crossovers. I mean, mm -hmm. they it was in just, crisis. but I think Flash, I liked Arrow, but there was just something about Flash I dug. You know? Yeah. I thought that was cool. I agree. And Legends of Tomorrow were fun, too. Um, I, I just wanted to bring this up, cause, just because we were talking about Steven. Steven uh, was... It was pretty great. I'm going to show this here. This was Stephen when he came into our studio. Uh, that is Anne, who may or may not be half drunk at this point because there was a lot of drinking going on this night when Amel came over. <laughs> yes. uh, and that is, is, of course, Kaori very inappropriately reaching for his Somebody package. call HR on this one? Yeah, someone should, should definitely call HR on that one. Uh, this was one that was a little bit more... <laughs> a little bit more thing, but he's, he's great. I, I absolutely love Stephen Amell. I've told the story before about on Anne's birthday. He literally, he was on set in arrow makeup and everything in Vancouver, took time out, went back to his trailer, recorded a birthday message wow. for Anne to send him in. And when you do something nice for Anne, you're in my good books forever. So you could do anything that'll get you canceled from the rest of the world. I will still be in your corner. And Stephen Amell is a okay in my books. I'll anyway, have to bring my Stephen Amell figure in my third party six scale figure to celebrate the demise of the CW Arrowverse style. to commemorate the demise of the CW. Yeah. Anyway, guys, question is for you. <laughs> what do you think about this? It does sound like it's going to start rounding out and winding down. The Arrowverse is probably coming to an end. And we're going to see a different type of incarnation, probably on HBO max. That's going to be probably be very different in tone, but what do you think about that? When you look back at the Arrowverse, do you remember it fondly? How do you feel about it? Whatever your thoughts are, jump down into the comment section below and let us know your Thoughts.